Hello everyone, today I will be going through a series that I came across recently, and I will explain its premise, why I think it has a chance to be the next big adventure manga, and why you should give it a chance. But before explaining why I think this series deserve your attention, I will go through the first chapters, explaining some plot lines and characters, before giving you my final rant. If you guys wish to support me, then consider checking out my store as well as my Ko-fi page to see other exclusive content that I can't post here and don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it by the end, I'm sure you would. And so without any further ado, let's jump straight into Zatsuya Fuyojutsushi, also titled, Until the Chore Enchanter Builds Up to His Strongest. The narrator explained that this is an event that occurred months ago before the current timeline where it's said that people who do not run when met with the floor boss for reasons like fear or greed. Then the only thing that awaits them is death. Before we are met with our soon-to-be main character who looks scared and frightened. Possibly because his friends are passed out right beside him, and we conclude that their mission has probably gone sideways. As the protagonist wonders if they are alive or not. A loud banging is heard and he turns to see that he should be worrying about himself. Since he is now faced with the floor boss himself as he growl and snarl at him. He had already taken out his companions with one blow. So needless to say that the MC is clearly in the defense here and start contemplating whether he should run away while carrying his team, or fight long enough in hopes of buying time until rescue arrives. But neither seems reasonable and Vimmy Strauss brace himself before taking a deep breath, and chanting one final attack that could somewhat save him from this predicament. Switch Puppin Spieler. A flashback come across his mind of the party that he belonged to, also known as Dragon Wings. How they took him as a member and the days they spent together. Before he charge at the floor boss and just as he is about to enter a duel with a creature that took down his companions. We jump back to the present time in the Dragon Wings part house as Vimmy is cornered by his party members, Kronos, Nikur and Melis. This is where we realize the true dynamic of this party as they all seems to hate Vimmy for some reason. And this has just been amplified after one of them state that Vimmy was the one that took the monster down since they all believe that the monster was worn out. Thus Vimmy final blow was just a lucky shot and his buffs couldn't be enough to take the monster down. Now keep this word in mind buffs as we gonna need it later. Even Vimmy try to explain that they are correct and it was just luck, even trying to crack his signature creepy smile that would be a concurring theme in this manga. Yet this isn't helping and he has to beg to be kept in the group, stating that no other place will hire a granter, which is basically an adventure that can give something but I will explain this ability later. But once again, he is met with scorn and belittlement as Kronos tried to kick him off the party, and even challenge him where if he win he can stay. But for some reason Vimmy cannot fight as he believes he is too weak, and even though he risked his life for them, and tried to fit in with the party whom he appreciated, Vimmy is replaced by Sophia, a new recruited that will fill his place just as they all tell him that he isn't needed. And so with his career of being an adventurer chattered, his heart broken, and his future blank, Vimmy takes himself into the city of Full Brown. A place filled with dreams and hopes of hunters who wants to make it as dungeon seekers and become famous. A city where the labyrinth is highly respected as a gift that contains monsters and magical items, to which the adventurers can hunt and obtain to elevate their status amongst each other. And with so many people getting into this career, his role as a simple grantor is in low demand in comparison to other mages and hunters. Thus sending him into a depression spiral where he doesn't know what to make of himself, and whether he is to be accepted in another party or no. So with nothing else to do, Vimmi decide to spend the last of his money in Greta's bar where he is congratulated by her and many others but he isn't happy about that since he no longer belong there and can't even enjoy the food on his table. After all, it reminds him of his time in the same table with the people who turned on him. This creates a toll on him, but he is suddenly interrupted by a girl calling for him, and the two are familiar with each other. The girl, Heidi Marie seems out of breath as if she has been looking for him for a while but before we know why, we jump back to the Adventure Guild office where a man report of the latest mission made by Dragon Wings to a mysterious figure, which states that the four of them took down the monster. However, it has been examined and revealed that the wounds and the kill strike had been made by Machete, a weapon only used by Vimmy Strauss, whom the figure seems to be familiar with meaning a non-combatant just took down a floor boss alone. The next chapter is slow a little bit. 
Matter of fact this manga doesn't jump into action but instead take his time making the reader connect with the character and feels for him as he tried to find a way out. And I will be going more on that later. Anyway following on the point where Heidi Marie came to Vim me in the bar after she stalked him, which is something that is like her character trait, being a Yandera or something like that, the two catch up and Heidi Marie tried to shear him up but it clearly isn't working, so she invites him to Nacht Libel, one of the strongest parties in the city, as she herself is a member there and can vouch for him. This chapter also give us a hint of mystery, as to the reason of Heidi Marie action towards Vimmy are because she knows everything about him, meaning that there are things kept secret from us and how Vimmy doesn't realize his own strength, like how he was able to avoid a couple of bandit on his way back from the inn. So fast that they mistake him for an actual Nacht Libel member, and the next day, Vimmy is taken to their base where we see Abel, a party member and Camellia, leader of the party itself, and since the part highly respect Heidi Marie. They decide to test him by taking him with them for a dungeon scout. There, Vimmy is clearly seen nervous as he always feels out of his comfort zone especially when he is tasked with help mapping the floor, and yet he is easily able to do so, especially when he can detect possible traps set by the floor and warn the others using his expanded search spell, managing to surprise everyone as the trap fit the exact descriptions. Now here is a point I quickly want to make. Throughout this series you will see Vimmy constantly berating himself and walking nervously, which do get tiring sometime as it isn't explained what happened, but the author constantly show it, and he always apologies even for the minor mistakes and how awkward he can be, which almost made me quit this manga but I'm happy I pushed through it which you will see why soon. Now not long after they search the floor, they are met with another floor boss, one that Vimmy and Heidi Marie are tasked with taking down, and this is where we get to see Vimmy power in detail for the first time, as his power described as a buff allows him to severely enhance others' capabilities as long as they approve him. And he used that to decimate the monster. He even showcased his attribute to others and they turned speechless. Even Camellia herself want him to enhance her attack which help her decimate the second monster but makes her skeptical about why Vimmy was kicked off Dragon Wings since he clearly has some impressive analytics and practical skills, and thus she start to consider making him a full-fledged member of her party. The next chapters explore Heidi Marie's view of Vimmy, and how although he is making friends with the party, he doesn't truly accept the idea of fitting in and always has to worry whether he would disappoint the people around. Camellia even get to see Vimmy's skills in settling off the party reports, and realize how much Dragon Wing was undermining him as they let him do all the work and paid him almost next to nothing. And speaking of Dragon Wings, by this time the party was going through the 35th floor of the labyrinth and had to make their way through a horde of monsters, and they barely managed to escape, only to realize that they reached a dead end. They miraculously survived the ordeal by using brute force. However, the newest party member Sophia start having doubts as this group is too weak to defeat the floor boss that was taken down, and moreover despite what Kronos said about him being useless, looking at the reports, it's clear that there is something special about Vimmy. He on the other side, just woke up from a nightmare of his past when he used to get reprimanded by his party member from being too weak and eventually fired. The next chapters are a slow ride as we just get to see Vimmy training with Camellia and explaining his power system which could be just summered down to advanced enhancing spells, which does feel like the author is giving it too many thought than it has to be, as it becomes repetitive but I will leave it up to you to decide that. Other than that we get to see Heidi Marie as she stalks Vimmy is his daily life showing that she deeply cares for him. From following every step he takes to protecting him from the other party members who basically just want him to let loose. And even states again that she knows everything about him. Which at this point I didn't know if it was just a character trait, or if she really knows something that nobody does. We also get to briefly see Dominic the man from before as he asks Camellia for her help since they are investigating the 97th floor master death case. That Vimmy himself is considered to be the one who cleared the monsters which make Camellia affirm that they need to test his combat ability in the next raid. We then jump to the day of the test or a few months after Vimmy joined Nacht Libel where he once again proves his tactical and strategic ability to the part members from avoiding traps to providing support, meaning that everyone by now trust him with their life and Camellia decide that it would be a good time to put him against the floor monster, who turn out to be a giant clay doll. Vimmy does seem nervous but not because he's afraid. And after a slight push by Heidi Marie, 
he jumps into action using his machete, explaining what a granter is and why there are only few in this profession, just as the monster attack but he is easily able to avoid it much to his surprise. And this is where he does something very interesting where he has to hold himself back and remind himself not to be greedy as he applies Draymar enhancement on himself. This allows him to penetrate the monster with brute force thus finally catching sight of his core before destroying it completely, much to the surprise of everyone who could barely see what happened. And Camellia once again is skeptical about his abilities as they don't match his character. She asks Heidi Marie about them but the latter only state that Vimy is Vimy and he has been like that since they were kids. This does seem to cause an effect on the other members as shown in the next few chapters where some consider him creepy or hiding something, since most members come from prestigious places and elite schools rather than being a dismissed party member. And even the investigator from the guild thinks so too and asks Camellia to deliver her report on him, eventually concluding that they need to keep an eye on Vimy. After a few chapters of his training where Vimy is observed by Monica and tested by Abel, as well as a moment showcasing what kind of a place is the 98th floor, showing a group of adventurers hunted down one by one. And we see Nack Libel as they march through full brown in celebration from their upcoming raid and Camellia encourage the party to be brave. As this is the most important mission they will have and they all embark inside. There and as soon as they enter, a nervous Vimmy is seen comforted by Abel and given word of encouragement before hearing a voice welcoming him, stating to himself that he always hears this voice once entering the labyrinth. As always Vimmy proves himself capable by detecting every trap in that floor and even knowing the types of monsters hiding within, thus allowing the other members like Hans and Monica to cut through them with ease thanks to his enchantment. And he goes further by showing them how to lay out their spells to be more effective. Hans take another monster with his latest enhanced sword much to his surprise, before Vimy finish the one who tried to sneak on them, jokingly stating that it's just a small fry. After finding a remnant of the previous raid and paying their respect, the group end up in another section of the floor, which seems to be safe enough for the main force to join them and set up a relay point. Wim is asked by Heidi Marie to take some rest, but for some reason, he can't help but to stress about some possible threats that could happen and they won't be able to escape if the paths were closed, yet he becomes too tired from everything that occurred up to this point, and overthinking which eventually lead him to go to sleep. Moments later, drops of water could be heard and Vimy wakes up in shock, realizing that what he was mostly afraid of just happened, as it has begun to rain. So much so that their southern path had been flooded and they do their best to, to panic, but to make things worse, something is making his way towards the North Passage as well and they all combine their attack towards it, but it proves little to no effect as they are hit by giant tentacles. Heidi reuses an enchantment to make the monster visible, showing exactly what they are up against, a giant-like sea cow that Wim has never encountered before and never heard of, yet the party members refuse to sit back in their best combat and charge ahead. Camellia step in as well while we are giving a short flashback of her past, and how she wished to become stronger and progress even further, and just how much she appreciate Vimy for giving her the ability to do so and reach the limit of her power, striking the monster with her kaijin giri before the rest of the part finish it off. As Nak Lebel celebrate their victory, Vimy is seen on the side doubtful on how easy it was to take down this floor boss and why hasn't the rain stopped yet, and not long his skepticism are confirmed when a loud noise is heard getting everyone attention and they all turn to see another monster approaching them, this time, almost five times bigger than the first. Everyone are speechless as the beasts lay ahead since they just realize that this won't be an easy fight like they thought, and before they can react, a mob of similar sea cow monsters surrounds them and start attacking brutally, passing through the party defenses and laying havoc on them even with Vimmy enhancement spells, scattering everyone. In Vimy words, this was the worst scenario that could happen as they can barely fight back against the giant tentacle monster, leaving only few left which amongst, stand the party leader Camellia firmly, who asks Vimy to focus all his granter enchantment on her and run while he can. Vimy seems hesitant at first but oblige, and Camellia approve his spell, giving her a massive boost in power that allows her to attack the monster over and over again so much so that she feels like she can fight on equal ground as him. And all while this happened, Nack Labelle regroup and Heidi Marie ask Vim to follow her. However, he start having old flashbacks of how he used to be treated by Kronos in the past. 
and how Camellia was kind to him and gave him a reason to push forward during their training phase the past months so why isn't he stepping ahead into battle? Is it because of fear? Or something else? Hyde Mary can see through his expression and ask him not to humiliate himself and not to run back from his thoughts this time. And all while this is happening, Camellia is still breaking through the monster defenses and use her entire remaining force to hurt it, but is unable to dodge in the process and takes a massive hit to the side. Then Mi quickly jumps to her aid all while requesting for able help with the barrier and manage to save her just in time before the monster attack. A wounded Camellia asks them about her party members even when she is at the brink of death, and requests to leave her behind and run away alongside whoever can run, as the situation is impossible to reverse. She then gets ready to use herself as a meat barrier as a last resort all while everyone are fighting for their lives which put Vimmi under immense stress. He start having a breakdown from being unable to accept that people are going to die in few moments, as well as remembering his time with the party for the past months, and what kind of person he truly is. Shortly after, and as everyone is trying to find a solution, Vimmi activate a communication spell that allows him to address all the members in apologies as he is about to directly disobey orders. He didn't want things to reach this point but now he has no choice but to activate his buff, and state that he will take down the floor boss much to Camellia's shock and curiosity, as she knew he had something to hide and questions him about it. But Vimmi doesn't respond instead he activate a spell onto himself, a final card under his sleeves named, Puppet Master. And now this is where I will have to end this story and leave it up to you to see where it will be heading. This manga was really fun to read and I have some things to say here and there about the pacing. And how it sometimes feel drawn out, and the characters spend too much time explaining Mumi's power system but in the end it's just an enhancement techniques. Although that will change in the future, as we explore more of his character and storyline. Side character wise, I really enjoyed most of the characters, but one thing to mention is that 16 chapters in and with no villain in sight does seem like a downside. That depends if you count dragon wings as villains but they are more of just a group of assholes and nothing more, so there is also that to take into account. But I'm really curious on where the author will take this series and as soon as I've read it, I wanted to make a video about it since I think it has the potential to be the next Anmaki. If, and I say only if the author paid more attention to the passing and lore into it. So if I were to rate this series, based on the three important things in the manga, I would give the storyline a 7 since I really like the premise of dungeons and adventure mangas but I still believe the story need a push to be there. As for the pacing, it's a strong 5, some dialogues seem stretching longer than they have too, and you feel like these panels could be used to give other more important information or flush out more characters. The art style is decent and more than that sometimes, so I will give it an 7, 5. Which is why I will recommend this manga if you have some free time and think about benjying some adventure story where the MC is extremely overpowered, in a realistic manner. By the time making this video, there are about 23 chapters, so it's still not too late to pick up the pace and make some changes. And if you like adventure and magic mangas, you should definitely read Zatsuya Fuyojutsushi. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy it and wish to support me, head out to my store and consider getting one of my many anime merch clothes. There is also my Ko-Fi page where you can support me directly and donate to get exclusive content. If not, then just liking the video and subscribing will be enough help for my channel. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section, as well as what you want to see in the future. Again, thank you for your support, and I will talk to you next time.